scriptures and out here in the pew as well, uh, I want you to look at those and bring them with you. <clears throat> you really need to, to have that because I go so fast and there's so many scriptures. It's like, it's like today's message. There is no way I could give all the scriptures at one time. It's just so many. So I just pulled out something God has showed me. So please carry that with you. But you guys know that we are a different kind of church. And I'm thankful for that. I, I'm th- I thank God for that. I thank God that He's doing this. God showed me that we need to truly understand who we are. And we are a kingdom-focused church. Well, what does that mean? So for the last two or three weeks, I've been trying to show you what that means, how to walk in the kingdom. So I'm going to start back here. And today's message, though some of you have heard some of this stuff many a times, some things you've never heard before in your life, probably. There's some things that might be new. Let the Spirit open it up to you. So it's very important that we understand biblically what these things mean. Look at first again, as we start out last week, Matthew 6, 33, and it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The very first message I showed you, remember, was about light and darkness. And most people don't really understand that, but you've got to have a foundation. You're not going to be able to walk in God's kingdom or do anything for that for God and Him bless you and walk in that if you don't know what your foundation is. Every house has got to have a foundation. So what is your foundation? And as I share with you, it's very important you understand this, we're all in a natural body upon this natural earth that everyone in this room will be affected by the supernatural one way or the other. You'll be affected by God's kingdom or Satan's kingdom. There is no in-between. A lot of darkness. So you need to understand, if you don't walk and know how to walk in God's kingdom, you will be affected whether you want to or not. If you say, well, I'm not, I'm not going to seek after Satan's kingdom and you just ignore God's kingdom, then Satan's already using you. He's already got you. He is going to influence you one way or another unless you walk in the way God says do it. Amen? So understand how important this is. And we were showing this even um, in the uh, second message. Last week we got into dealing with about spiritual man. I was showing you what that kingdom really is. And I pulled out and showed you some things there last week dealing with that. And that's dealing with Genesis 1.28. Look at what this says. This goes back to the kingdom. Genesis 1.28. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth move upon the earth. Now listen to what Hebrews 3.1 says. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, underline that, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Are you partakers of the heavenly calling? Do you even understand what that is? Most religious people are upon the earth just trying to make a living, trying to live right, trying to take care of the families, and trying to live a good moral life. And one day they get to go to heaven if they're born again or saved. And if they don't, they go to hell. We try to live our lives that way. That's not why God created us. We have a heavenly calling. And your heavenly calling is what? It goes there again, back to Genesis 1, 28. And this is your heavenly calling again. God says He wants you to be blessed and to be fruitful and to multiply and to replenish the earth, subdue it and have dominion over it. And He says not only that, I want you to have dominion over the earth and over what's in the sea and what's in the air. And if we're not doing that as mankind, we're not doing God's heavenly calling. It's just that simple. It doesn't matter what anybody else has to say. What does God say? God has a kingdom and it is blessed. Satan has a kingdom and it is cursed. It's just that simple. One's darkness, one's light. One's a goat and one's a sheep. It's real simple. You can't add to it. You can't join a club to make you any better. You can't sit here and try to give and do all these things to make you earn it. You can't be self-righteous. Either you're righteous or you're not. You've been made righteous or you haven't. 
it's real simple, but we make it hard. But yet most of us are trying to, to um, figure it out because of the garbage that we've been taught. So this is where I'm going today. Uh, before I go any further in the kingdom, I'm going to go back to a, a message that's simple, yet it's not. Okay? Everybody in this room, before you leave here today, needs to really examine yourself. Look at yourself. Seriously. Most of you already know, probably, but you might know folks around you who's not either born again or saved. What does that mean? Because half or more of what I was taught and probably what you was taught is just not biblical. And I'm asking you today as we're sitting in here for you to try to erase all of the garbage, and it's hard to do, of the things you've heard about salvation and about being born again and listen to it, what the Bible really has to say about it. Because the problem is, a lot of what you've been taught is wrong. It's just like me. If When I get to go over to Africa, and you can take people in the, from, a, from a different country who's never heard all this religion of man, and show them the kingdom, and it's a whole lot easier for them to get born again and start operating in God's kingdom than us. Because Satan has done a very good job by coming down here and bringing in darkness in religion and messing our minds and our souls up to a point to where our definitions of what these things are completely wrong. Now, let's bring this deeper. Look at what this says. Go over to John chapter 3. And this, this break this down. I want you to see something here. This is very powerful. Very very interesting here. Look at this. John chapter 3, and let's start here in verses 1. It says, there was a man of the Pharisees. Stop right there. Put it in today's terms. There was a man of the Baptist. There was a man of the Methodist. There was a man of the Catholic. There was a man of the Church of God. There was a man of religion. You understand that? The word Pharisees and Sadducees goes back to man's religion. Okay? Are y'all seeing this? Now keep in mind what I've already showed you in the past. Watch this. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Now watch. The same came to Jesus by what? By what? There's a, there's a meaning there. Remember I showed you a couple weeks ago about light and darkness? Who's created darkness? Who's the prince of darkness? Satan. Understand this religious man whose name Nicodemus is going to Jesus by, not day, but by night. Why? Well, our first natural reaction is because we are, he's, a, he's afraid he might be seen, so he's going to sneak to him at night. And that part would be true in the natural Understand, guys, you've got to see this from a spiritual perspective. Always read God's Word spiritually. Let the Holy Ghost show you things. It's important to understand. He comes to Him by night. He's coming to Him from darkness. And who is the light? Jesus Christ. Now watch this. This is important. And He said unto him, Rabbi. Now how many here knows that Jesus, Jesus was a rabbi? How many understands, all the people I hear who's religious don't get this, that Jesus was a rabbi? Understand, he was Jewish. He was born a natural Jew. Whether we like it or don't like it, he was. This is where we always miss it. Watch this. We know that thou art a teacher from God, for no man can do the miracles that, that thou doest except, now watch this, God be with him. This is important to see this, to watch. Look at verses 3. Jesus answered, and said, now anytime you see in God's word where it says, verily, verily, there should be an open door for you spiritually to say, he's trying to tell me something here. Now watch, because remember, he goes to him in darkness, he's from religion, and he's asking him the question. He's trying to say, you, you, you have to be from God, because there's no way you could do all these things. Now watch, he says, he answers, it's verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Oh, in other words, see. This is important. Because when God repeats something twice in a row in his word, 
He's trying to get you to see something. And when he uses different words there, which he will, and you'll see it here in a minute, there is, there's a powerful thing going on here that I want you to see. Because God revealed this to me spiritually because a lot of people miss this. Guys, understand what he's trying to say here. First of all, let's break this down. What does, it, what does the word mean in a simple form of being born again? It simply means he's telling him, unless you become a new creature, unless you are born from above, you can't even see my kingdom. And that's what he's trying to tell him naturally. He can hear this. You can't even see my kingdom unless you're born from above. Unless something changes, unless you are a brand new person, you can't see my kingdom. Now, what's what he's showing him here? This is so powerful. I went back and looked at this and started looking at the word regeneration. Who's ever heard of that word, regeneration? Now, listen very carefully. I'm going to read something out to you that I, I, I looked this up. The natural man, listen very carefully, the natural man, our natural man, can be moral in our sense of being moral. This is important you see this. What we call moral, for example, if there's an earthquake, if there's a hurricane, if there's a tornado, or if anything happens, somebody's house burns down, a natural person, I don't care who you are, what quote, religion you have, can become moral humanist and go out here and try to help that person buy food, buy clothes, help them rebuild, and we say that's great. But guess what? That has absolutely nothing to do with God. Nothing to do with God whatsoever. You understand that? That's called being moral. We can do that and we should do those things and a person can be re redefined. In other words, we can, we can make our minds smarter. We can learn. We can study. All these things from a natural perspective. Now listen very carefully though, but it is absolutely, he is absolutely, and I mean absolutely blinded to the spiritual kingdom, the spiritual truth of Almighty God. We are completely impotent. We cannot enter into his kingdom on our own. You better hear this. This is why he's showing him this. There's, we have no way. You're, there is no way that you can obey. There is no way that you can do it on your own. You can't even understand the things of that kingdom from your natural man. Your natural man is not made for that. Your natural man is not supposed to even know, understand that. The natural is different than the spiritual. That's why he's telling him what he's telling him. You can't even see my kingdom unless you're a brand new creature. Unless you have a brand new creation that took place. Are y'all seeing this? this is important that y'all see this in, in, in the right way and not from the natural way. Bring it on down in John chapter 3. You know, watch this. Verses 4, it says, Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into the mother's womb and be born? Now watch this next part, because he changed it a little bit here. Jesus answered again and says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man. Now here, the very first time he's saying, And except a man be born again, he cannot even see my kingdom. But now he's going to show you how. He's going to show you what must take place. Now watch this. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, verses 5, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter. Another word, enter. Now how many here knows that seeing and entering is a different thing? He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Have you ever seen that before? I want you to watch this. This is important because twice he's bringing this out. He's saying the first time you can't even see my kingdom, but now he's saying you can't even enter into my kingdom unless you do, do it a certain way. Now, why is this important? Because of most people get it mixed up and they're confused because Satan's in a very good job through religion. Let's point a wonderful scripture that we always know and we've heard probably your whole life growing up. Okay, y'all ready? John 3, 16. How many of you ever heard of John 3, 16? How many here likes John 3, 16? I love it. But most people here has never heard what it, what, it really, what it really means. You have been lied to, whether it's been on purpose or by accident, of what it really means. Look at John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. Underline that. 
How many of you know God loves the world? God loved the world so much. Now, look what it says. That he gave his only begotten son. I don't know the word son. That whosoever believeth, I don't know the word believeth, in him should not perish because, now watch this, but have everlasting life. Now watch. Here's where most people miss it. If I was to sit here and look at your life, you could probably tell me a story kind of like what I'm fixing to tell you now. You was born into what a family you, that you was born into, whether it was here or some other place. You grew up and you've heard grandmama and grandpa, you've heard mama and daddy, friends, neighbors, or maybe nobody, somewhere, whether it's on TV, uncles, aunts, whatever, around you, who has told you their form of God. They've told you in one way or another their explanation, their thinking on God of what God is, who He is. And then somewhere down the line, you've been told that there is a hell and it's hot and you're going to burn there unless you are saved. How many of you have ever heard that? Unless you're saved. And then the gospel, this is very key when I say this, we quotate the gospel is presented to people in a form mostly like this, in a Romans road fashion. They were all guilty. We, and that would, that would be, all be true, right? There is a judgment. And then he came and he paid the price. Hallelujah for that. Jesus died on the cross. And he arose from the dead. This is what you're hearing now. And if you believe that he arose for you three days after he died... You can go to heaven. Hallelujah. Now say this prayer with me. Dear Lord, and we start quoting quoting a prayer. I'm a sinner. And I believe that you died for me and arose for me. Have y'all ever heard this kind of stuff before? We've been presenting these things. That's not what the Bible said. I'm trying to show you something here. Now I know it's shocking and quiet. Because, guys, what you have been programmed to believe and what I was programmed to believe is not what the Bible really says. If you only go to the cross, and if I only accept a a gospel, it's not the gospel, a gospel, it's called another, another gospel, that Jesus died for me. And if I only accept, and I only see that part of it, I'm not born again. Now listen to this. He shows you from the very beginning, you can't even see my kingdom, he says, unless you're a new creature. Now how do you become a new creature? You don't become a new creature because Uncle Joe told you you're going to burn in hell unless you, quote, join the church and get, quote, saved. Anybody in the right mind, if you say, here's heaven and here's hell, it's hot, it's bad, heaven's good, it's wonderful, choose, is going to choose hell. You're not going to choose that. Even the atheists don't even believe in hell. So they're not choosing it, they don't even believe in it, even though it's still real. They don't know what they believe. I'm trying to get you to see, guys, how God, if all you've ever accepted is a Baptist Jesus, you're not born again. If all you ever accepted was a Catholic Jesus, you're not born again. If all you ever accepted was a Methodist Jesus, you're not born again. If all you ever accepted was a Presbyterian Jesus, you're not born again. There is no such thing as a Baptist Jesus, a Presbyterian Jesus, a Catholic Jesus. It don't exist. But most people have been presented some form of a gospel in that fashion to them, and then they made a choice to try to join a, quote, religion of man, a church, and they usually pick someone who's their color, who's their background, who thinks like they do, who has the same amount of money amount of or lack thereof. If they like hymn music or praise music, if they like the kind of carpet that's in a church, the location of where they live, and I could go on and on and on and on. How you was raised because mama and them was, uh, was Catholic or was Presbyterian, I'm supposed to be too. We have no idea what we're doing. We're walking around trying to choose a gospel that we've totally missed the way, the gospel. That will not get you to heaven. 
scary, I know, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of folks out here who has, who has accepted a God of that nature. And that's not the God of the Bible. It's quiet. Search yourselves. I'm trying to get you to see this, guys, because if you don't settle this issue with yourself, then you're going to go to the kingdom like this. Well, I think it's real. I'm going to check it out as I'm going along to see if I can uh, have some proofs there before I go into it. No, you can't enter God's kingdom like that. If you're going to learn how to walk in God's kingdom, you better have this one thing cleared up and sure. And honey, you better know who you are in Christ. I don't care if you go to a Baptist church or a Methodist church or any kind of religious church. It's got nothing to do with it. But honey, they didn't save you. There was one who did. Now, there are people, and hear me in fairness, there are people out here who are going to these kind of churches. You might know people, I don't know, who really are born again or saved. The word saved is presented to us in the Bible in ways that sometimes we miss. For example, God says He loves the whole world. He gave His only begotten Son. Will everybody accept him? No. God's will is for everybody to be saved. Is everybody going to be saved? No. So when you say the word saved, you've got to understand true salvation and true born-again experience are really the exact same thing. I'm going to teach you how to walk in what he gave you. But, but, if you use the word saved in the way I just now presented it to you, it's not the same thing. Does that make any sense? If you think all saved is, I believe, I believe, I believe. Satan believes, demons believe, just believing will not get you saved. But great, the Bible says that. No, it don't. You cannot take John three sixteen out of context and then try to add your own gospel to it and call it Romans Road and go down this road and present what you want it to say out of context and make it say something and then ignore the rest of the scriptures. That's not how you do God's word. Put it back in context and let's look at what it really has to say. Amen. Are y'all seeing this, anybody? The son there is talking about in John 3, 16 is not Jesus. Now, I love Jesus. The son there, go back and look it up, is Christ. He gave his only begotten son, Christ. That's what it's talking about. And if you don't know Christ, as Jesus is talking to Nicodemus and saying, if you're not a new creature or born from above... What do you think that the above come from? Christ is from above. Christ is that spiritual seed. And that spiritual seed was planted into this earth, into Mary, to be born into a natural body called Jesus. But if all you ever see is that kind of Jesus, you're not born again. And I'm telling you, guys, religions, some religions will have a short-haired Jesus. Some will have a blue-eyed Jesus. Some will have a Mexican Jesus. Then some will have a black Jesus. Some will have, they'll have their own forms of what they think he looks like. And they think that's what saves them, and that's not what saves you. I'm telling you guys, deal with it today. You need to know this. It's important for us to understand because we want to help the folks around us with this. Look at what Isaiah 9.6 9.6 says, before we move on in John, now watch this. This is prophecy. It says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son. How many here knows what the word son means? It means Christ, but guess what it means in Isaiah? It's the same thing. What kind of church are we? We're a kingdom-focused church. Guess what the word son means? Kingdom. The word son means kingdom. It means glory. It means power. So what's it saying here in Isaiah? For unto us a child is born, unto us a kingdom is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of what? Peace, not darkness. Are y'all seeing this? Christ is the Son of God. Jesus is the Son of Man. 
what was in Jesus was Christ. It was that kingdom. It was God's glory. It was his power that was walking with us on this physical earth. Hallelujah. And he's telling him, telling Nicodemus, you can't even see my kingdom, which is right there in front of him, but what was blocking it was Jesus. In other words, what Nicodemus was looking at was a physical man, Jesus, but he could not see into or behind the cross that was coming, which was Christ, the Son of God, the kingdom is talking about. And unless you have a new creature or born again into that, then you're not going to heaven. I don't say that. God's Word says it. So don't think that there's some little easy way out here that you can just walk in this life and live like hell and do what you want to do and then lay in a hospital bed and some priest or pastor walks up and you go walk up and say some little prayer because you don't want to die and go to hell and speak it with your lips. And say, I believe, I believe that will not get you to his kingdom. I'm sorry, that's not scriptural. Yes, God loved the whole world. It is God's will for everybody to be saved. But you're not going to do it in your way, it must be in His way. So what is His way? Let's carry this deeper. Are y'all ready? Anybody wants to go deeper with this? I want you to see this, guys. Look over at Mark 16, 16. Because, guys, I'm telling you, I have watched so many people, and I was, used to be one of them, not knowing not knowing, I have no idea. I'm not saying folks are doing it on purpose. But Satan can use people from the influence of the darkness to just get you off slightly from the truth. And all of a sudden, now you're walking down another path. You have another gospel. You have another way. And you're trying now to please God by your own ways. Do you really think God's up there saying, okay, Greg and everybody in the world, listen, I'm going to have all kinds of ways out here. I'm going to have you know, Methodists and Baptists. If, you know, if, you don't, if, you're, if you're afraid of water and you don't want to get dunked, it's okay. Just get sprinkled. I got some over here, for, over, over here for you. And if you like hymn and music, I got one church over here for you. And if you know, God does not operate that way, guys. He don't have pick and choose smorgasbord of his kingdom. So you've got to get to a place to wherever you go that that's not what it's about. If all you just talk about, quote, your religion, there's a serious problem with that. If all you are talking about is your church and the fun you have and the trips you go on and the people that you're around, and that's all you talk about, there's a serious issue there. Yeah, the body, the local church should be talking about Him, the kingdom, the glory of what He's doing through us and the spiritual gifts in, in action among the people. Look at this. It's so powerful. Mark 16, 16. Now, how many of you know God's word cannot go against itself? Okay? So to put John 3, 16 in perspective, if all you have got to do is just believe and that's it, that means this next verse here is wrong. Now watch. I love this. Watch this. Mark 16, 16 says this. He that believeth, that means faith, and is baptized. Oh, no, I don't know the word baptized. Shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Or which means condemned. Now let's stop right here. Now let's go back to religion, okay? Here we go. Religion. We got religion out here that teaches, Oh, brother, if you're not baptized in water, and I mean completely dunk too, every hair of your head, you're going to go to hell. That's not what it says. It says it right here, Greg. No, it, that's not what it says at all. That's got nothing to do with what that means. Well, that's just your opinion. No, it's not my opinion. See, the problem is all of our different religions has taken Scripture out of context and make it say what they want it to say. Because if that's true of what they think it means, then take out of your Bible the two things on the cross. One of them accepted, the other one didn't. So, oh, in the whole on, in the whole on, both of them went to hell. No, that's not what it says. One of them went to paradise to be with him in his kingdom. He's asking about his kingdom. Remember me in your kingdom, he says. This day, he said, you shall be with, be with me in paradise. Some dumb religions take, oh, God stopped time and took it down off the cross and got him wet and then put it back on the cross so he could fulfill it. That's not biblical either. That's goofy. I'm trying to show you all some things here, guys. 
Should you be water baptized? Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. But guess what? It's not going to get you to heaven. I could sit here and get dunked a thousand times and throw in a bar of soap and it's joy and, and some Purex and everything else, and you're still going to be a sinner if you're not born again on the inside. All, all water baptism is naturally. Now watch this. It's showing the world on the outside of what is supposed to have took place in here on the inside. So go back to that scripture again. Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized. Well, what, well, what, then what does that mean? Baptism has got nothing to do with water baptism. A shock again. That goes against so much religion of our things we've been taught, told. Now, there again, there's nothing wrong with it. But, honey, we've got churches. What's the focal point of, 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 of most churches? Right here in the middle of it. You've got the big screen and you've got behind it the big baptism tank. Honey, we go and we just start dunking folks. You, I mean, we think, we think about dunking everybody that somehow that's going to get you born again. If there's something that did not take place in here, I'm telling you, folks are going to be going to hell wet. I'm, I'm showing you the biblical truth, guys. I'm trying to get you to understand here how important it is for you not to follow a religion of man. Now, there's nothing wrong with being, with being baptized. It's, it's great. There's a spiritual meaning behind these things is what you've got to understand and know. Now, hold your place here and go back again to verses 5. And let's look at what it says again. Then we're going to move, we're going to move on. John chapter 3, verses 5 says, Jesus answered. He's already saying, you can't see it unless you're born again. Then he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water, underline that, and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom. He cannot enter into Christ. So let's break this thing down. Again, now look over at Galatians 3.27. It's important to get this, guys. There is no such thing as, as you're turning to Galatians 3.27, there is no such thing as, well, I'm saved, I'm a Christian, I'm just not spiritual. What? What does that mean? You've been told in religion that you believe, but you're not spiritual. No, what it means is you're going to go to hell. That's exactly what it means. There is no such thing. You cannot say, I believe, and I'm going to go to heaven, but I'm not spiritual. What does it say? Look at Galatians 3.27. For as many as of you have been baptized, oh, not the word baptized, this has got nothing to do with water. Into Christ. Who's Christ? Son of God. Have put on Christ. Y'all said it before, but let's, let's just go back and look at it deeper. Go, go back to Romans chapter 6. Romans 6. I'll go quick with this. Romans 6. I want you to see this, guys. There's been so much garbage put out here through different kind of religions. It mess you up. What is Baptism. Look at it. Romans 6, 1 through 10 says this, watch. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Question mark. God forbid. Now listen very carefully because guys, if you are born again, a new creature, this should be talking about you. Look at verses 2. God forbid, God forbid how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were what? Baptized into Jesus Christ was baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Underline that. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in what? Newness of life, that's the kingdom. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we also be in the likeness of his resurrection. That's where we miss it. Most folks go and accept Jesus and miss Christ. You ain't born again. You have a, you have a picture of Jesus, 
but you can't have a picture of Jesus and accept what he did unless something takes place on the inside first and brings you to the door, which is Jesus. You can't go into Christ, the kingdom, until you're born again. Hallelujah. Now watch. And here's what it means, guys. Watch. Verses 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. Now watch. That henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. If your spirit is dead, you are freed from sin. And all of a sudden, dun, 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 first John makes sense where it says that you cannot sin anymore because your spirit man is freed from sin and your spirit man cannot sin. I'm not talking about your physical body. I'm not talking about your soul. I'm not talking about that. I mean your spirit man that once was in darkness now has died and been crucified in Jesus Christ and raised up in him and you are a brand new creature. You are born again into the kingdom. Now you don't know how to operate in it yet, but you've been baptized into it. That is what true salvation is. If you've presented any other gospel than that, then you're probably not born again. I don't say that. God's word here says it. Look here, verses um, 8. It says, Now if we be dead with Christ, are you dead with Christ, the Son of God? We believe that he shall also live with him. Verses 9, Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death have no more dominion over him. Hallelujah. For in him that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Are y'all seeing this? Now look at what Romans 8 and 9 has to say about it. But you are not in the flesh, but in the what? Spirit. If so be it, it says, that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not, what? The Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Did you catch that? Which simply means in, in, in today's form is, if I went and joined a church and I accepted a Baptist Jesus or a Methodist Jesus only and did not hear me, hear the Holy Ghost drawing me and convicting me, Uncle Joe was not the Holy Ghost. Your pastor is not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit must come into your soul and must draw you to the door, your conscience, your feelings. And by faith, you must accept what He did for you that you can't see. That's the believing part. And when I do, my spirit man, it's inside me, will die and be raised up in Christ. That's the baptism part. That's exactly what happened to the thief on the cross. Did he get to go there without being wet? Yes, he did. Is being wet a good thing? Yes, it's great. But being wet and making a church ceremony is not going to get you to heaven. If the change did not take place in here, he says, you can't even see my kingdom. To learn how to enter into it, he says clearly, now watch this, carry this deeper, guys. I want you to see this. Again, Romans 8 and 9 says this, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit of... If so be it that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He is none of his. And I always can tell it by the fruit. Well, I'm telling you, when you start preaching this kind of stuff right here, when you start preaching about how we're grafted to the Jewish people, when you start mentioning healing or the word Holy Ghost or the word power or praise, lift your hands and praise Him, that kind of stuff, anything of that nature, dealing with God's kingdom, you will either be like, hmm, never heard that before, but you, won't, you will not be offended. You're standing there like a, like a little baby inside the kingdom. I've been born again. And I've always wondered about this. And now you want to sit here and start trying to learn how to do it. But I'm telling you, if you are offended with what I'm saying, you have another gospel. The seed of Christ cannot be inside you if you are offended with Christ. 
Hello? I don't say that. No, God says that. Romans 8 and 9. I don't say it. He does. Are y'all seeing this? It's important. It will not work. Now go back again and let's look at this. John 3, 5. Make sure you get this. I keep going back to it on purpose because I want you to see this. John 3, 5. Let's see what this really is. John 3, 5 says this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So what's, so what's the water? What's the water? Now watch this. What does the Bible say it is? Ephesians 5, 26 says, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Guess what the word is? It's the water. Huh? In other words, it is the regeneration, the cleansing process of the word of God. That's why Jesus in the natural went to John the Baptist to be baptized. He wasn't a sinner. He was fulfilling scripture. He is the Word. He is the kingdom. He is the glory. Remember, the Word is God and was with God from the beginning. He's the great I Am. He is the living water. Hallelujah. You say, well, I thought it was the Holy Ghost. It's the same thing. In other words, the Holy Ghost and Christ and God all poured the Godhead. But the Word is living. And if you're not cleansed, hear me, if you're not cleansed, because what does Mark 16, 16 say? It says, unless you are baptized, which means I'm baptized into Christ, into His Word, the kingdom. And if I don't have the baptism, and if I don't have a new spirit, and it says the Holy Spirit, and then it says the Spirit of Christ. It's the same Godhead. Are y'all seeing this? The Word should not offend you. The Word cuts like a knife, and it will divide what does it divide? As God did in the very beginning. He said, I will divide lightness and darkness. I will divide sheep and goat. I will divide religion of man and my kingdom. Y'all see in this? If, the, if, if Christ is inside you, the word's not going to offend you. You might not understand it all, but it's not going to offend you. Does that make any sense? Look over at 1 John chapter 5. Y'all getting this, anybody? There again, I'm telling you, I could go on and on and on for weeks on this one subject. I'm trying to get you to see what you've been presented as what true salvation or saved really is. It is not. True salvation is true being born again. True salvation. Now, let's, what, what does the Word say about this? 1 John chapter 5. Look at verses 7. This is powerful. For they are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, which is the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And y'all agree with that? Amen. Now watch. And there are three that bear witness in earth. The Spirit... The water, which is who? Now watch, it's the word, and the blood. And these all agree in one. Now watch, let's break this down for you. What does that mean? Because guys, I'm going to tell you something. If you don't get into the kingdom this way, you're not in the kingdom. I'm not trying to question, each person has to know. I was saved, now listen to my story, I was saved when I was nine years old in a Baptist church that's boring as all get out. All the Sunday school materials, all the boring, yawning sermons, joke three-point sermons, do, 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 be good, be good, be good. Garbage. I talked to my brother. My brother goes to a church of Christ, bless his heart. And seriously, I say that because it's, 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 a, it's a borderline cult is what it is. If you don't know that, study it out. 
And I've told him as such, and he, he don't really like that, but he, he sees because he didn't grow up that way. He was married into it. But here's the kind of garbage I'm talking about. Watch. He says, Greg, half the people in our church, the young people, middle-aged people, don't agree with their teachings. He said, for example, here's, here's a story he told me. A missionary they have comes to the church. Be going to Africa, be going to India. And he goes to a man there in India who's already going to church. And he brings his guitar on there and he sings. He said, but I told, this, this, this is the missionary, I told that man a thing or two. When I got done with him, he knew the truth. That you ever bring your guitar in church again, you're going to go to hell. Because they believe if you have music in church, you're going to go to hell. Because it's called spiritual ignorance. So instead of them doing good spiritually, they really ruined some guy's life by their preaching of religion of man. Another gospel instead of the gospel. And then I could go on and I could show you other stories of people going to Africa or India or whatever who's, who's of the Methodist faith, a Baptist faith, a Catholic faith, and pushing their stories and pushing their ways. You've got to get all dunked in the water. You're going, you're going to go to hell. Oh, no, it's just get sprinkled. And now I start living, living the right way. Oh, my God, your shirts, I mean, your, 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 your pants are, are just too short. You got too much makeup on. You're going to go to hell. All these things that people have in the religious garbage mind has totally missed God. But yet, can God still go in between the darkness and still get you and I? Yes. I was in a dead Baptist church. How did it go I had to go because it was the right thing to do. And one Sunday, I was sitting out here in the audience, nine years old. Body stretching. Hey, I just can't wait to get out of there. Can't stand it. Have you, ever, have you ever been that way in church before? I don't have, especially as a kid. Hearing the same tone to the voice. It never gets high. It never gets low. It's the same old sound. It's like, oh, God, I'm falling asleep. You know, That's how it was. Now, if you ever scream one time, you thought the whole world was coming in. You know, that's how it was. But one Sunday, the Holy Spirit, who I did not know who the Holy Spirit was, came in. And all of a sudden, that one particular Sunday, I'm drawn to what he was saying. For some reason, I was listening to what he was saying. I wanted to hear what he was saying. And in my soul, I was convicted. And I felt something. I didn't understand it all. The word kingdom wasn't even mentioned. It was joining my church, joining my church. Okay? But in the midst of all that garbage, the Spirit was real. The Spirit was drawing me. And I knew I wanted, I could care less about joining that old run-down church. I did care about what he was talking about. The Spirit can use me. Now watch. I go to the front. And yes, he goes through the, the, the rituals of signing this card and how old are you? And have you ever been to a church? And have you got a letter some other place? Like somehow the letters really, really mean something goofy. And I'm sitting here going through all this stuff. Now we're going to join the church. Before the quote joining of the church, he's saying, what are you feeling on the inside? It was the Holy Spirit. I didn't understand it all. But I knew I wanted Jesus Christ. And I accepted Jesus Christ. Now what happened to me then was this. It wasn't just, I believed, I'm saved, now I'm walking around powerless. When I was had some more stuff, no, that's not what happened. That's not what the Bible says. When I got born again, I was baptized into Christ. I died, my spirit man died, and I was raised up in him, hallelujah, at that very moment. Now, I didn't understand it all. But I remember the, that, that day and the next day. Then I got wet in the tank. I was great. There's nothing, nothing wrong with that. I am enjoying the church. Nothing wrong with that. The next day, I'm sitting here asking questions. What's next? Well, that's it. And from that point on, I was on my own. Asking, seeking. Not understanding, I was seeking the kingdom. And God starts pouring it out. If you have a humble, childlike heart and you're seeking God, watch what happens. I mean, guys, when I was nine years old, he was already teaching me about Jonah and the whale and how, how he was in a fish's belly for three days. 
So shall the Son of Man be in the heart of earth for three days. He taught me when I was nine years old how Jesus Christ died on the cross and the root of Jesse, how he descended to the lower parts of the earth and took the captivity captive, which was Adam and Eve and all the rest of them, and brought them to heaven. He taught me that at nine. Why? Because I was hungry for the kingdom. It wasn't from here, it was from here. Does that make any sense? Then after that, years later, I'm seeking more, seeking more, and seeking more. I've already got everything. It's already there. I just didn't know it. Now watch. Then I start seeking, and what God gave me was the infilling. Some calls that the baptism, which is not. What, what do you mean? The baptism, the Bible says there is one. One baptism. And that one baptism is true, born again, in the kingdom, salvation, so what the Bible says, that's what I accept. So it's not called baptism, but, 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 but what is it called then? It's called the infilling. It's called the glory, the power. And the Bible says seek after that daily, weekly, monthly. Why? That is the manifestation. Guys, have you ever took a glass of water and poured it in there and it runs over? We were talking about this very same thing in our, in our Sunday school class this morning. You can't help anybody run until you're, until you're, until you're running over. They, they actually brought it up in the class this morning. You know, if you're hurting and you need money, you don't go run to the poor. Oh, please give me some money. You go run to the rich. You don't, you don't go run to somebody who's not healed. You go run to somebody who's been healed. Hello? In other words, God wants us from his kingdom perspective of knowing who we are in him. Hallelujah. Not pushing a religion of man, but walking in his true kingdom to where it's pressed down and it's shaken together and honey is running over. The running over is that anointing, that glory, that power of God flowing. That's what people need to see in our lives. Are y'all seeing this? Now before we move on to show you how to do these things, bottom line is this. Do you truly understand your true salvation? Do you truly understand what's involved? Man, if you even look at the word salvation, see what all is involved in that? My Lord. It's not just going to heaven and walking on the streets of gold. It's your justification, your sanctification, your healing, the power. Of everything you can think of great is in salvation. Everything. So what salvation quote did you get? That's why Gary's always, always making a comment. I don't, I don't like using the word saved. Well, why do you think he says that? Because of what you and I have been programmed to think about what the word saved means is not what it really means. What it really means is what I just I showed you. Y'all seeing that? So you might have been born again and saved, and now what you've got to do is say, I'm tired, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm tired of being poor. I'm tired of being sick. I'm tired of living this way. If you go live for, for, for 40 years and go work at some plant somewhere, and you create something and become something in the earth, so what? What does that do for you? Absolutely nothing unless it's part of the kingdom of God. you got to understand, guys, unless you're connected to what the Bible says, your heavenly calling of why you're here, to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, to take dominion. When you get to that point, then God can birth these things naturally and give you creative ideas to create things, to take over the schools, take over the airways, take over your job. Just working somewhere and making a living is not good enough. God wants you to make a life, a life while we're here. That's what salvation really is. Honey, if you really realize what you've got and what's been given to you. But Greg, the Bible says that we, that we die to ourselves daily. Now, listen very carefully to those who don't understand this. Your spirit, man, it says, is dead and raised up and you're a new creature if you've been born again. Your soul, your mind, has to be renewed daily over to what he's already given you in the spirit, man. Has to be renewed daily over to what it says. Go, quit going to God begging for something and go to him boldly because he made you righteous. And tell him what his word says. That's planting seeds. God loves that. And then it says, your flesh is dying daily. That means you're taking the kingdom 
and telling darkness that's all around you and the curse of your flesh and saying, get out of the way, get out of the way, get out of the way. Sickness, I don't think so. See, a lot of times what happens is when you talk about the kingdom and you receive a healing, surely you receive it. If you don't understand how it works, the process of it, then Satan brings the symptoms back onto your body again and you think, well, I guess it wasn't God's will for me to be healed. But yet you've already been healed. But yet you see symptoms and you think you're sick again. Unless you understand who you are to say, "Uh uh-uh, that's symptoms, Satan, you are a liar, sickness, get up under my feet, poverty, you might have taken my mom and daddy, or my grandpa, or my aunt and uncle, but you're not going to take me. For me, me in my house, we're going to serve the Lord, hallelujah. We're going to go forward. When you get to that place in your life, and start talking this way, speaking this way, understanding God's word from that perspective, I promise you, it will change your whole life. Amen? Are y'all confused, or do you receive what I have for today? Y'all got it? Amen. I know it's a simple message, really. But you got to have this before you go on. Because now, starting next week, I'm going to assume y'all born again. Y'all understand it. You've dealt with it. And they ain't going to move on on how to walk in the kingdom. You're going to move on. you got your foundation. You know what the kingdom is. It's from God's heavenly throne. Hallelujah. So it's from the spiritual. You want it to be into your natural. Hallelujah. So we're going to start teaching you step by step how to manifest what have been, what's there into the now. Amen? Can we all stand to our feet, please? As we get ready here to close... Miss George, you going to play something, okay? Um, as she's playing, please, 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 deal with yourself first. Is the Holy Spirit telling you that you are saved? No doubt. You got it. Yes, hallelujah. If you are, then praise God. Thank you for that. But if you're being convicted today and you don't know for sure, the Spirit's showing you you need what He's talking about here. True born-again experience. Because guys, I don't care what anybody says, when you die, you will either go to heaven or you will go to hell. And you could die today, after a while, tomorrow, I don't know. There's no guarantee. But I promise you this, when you die and you leave this physical body, and you've heard this message today and you've not dealt with it, some people get one chance and some get hundreds. So what's your need? Now if you're Needing salvation today. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. The only when the Spirit of God is drawing you to the door. That's John 6, 44. It's not just by joining a church. Garbage. But if you're here and you know for a fact you are saved, thank God for that. But how about your mom and your daddy? How about your brothers and sisters? How about your neighbors, your loved ones? Do you know if they really are born again? Or do they accept another gospel? Pray for them. For them to make sure. Because you know what? It's the hardest thing in the world when somebody's been in church for 40 years and they've been a deacon or a Sunday school teacher or whatever it may be. And they think they're saved. And they have they have gone down a road that's got nothing to do with these things I showed you. For them, the Holy Spirit to convict them. It's so hard. That's where it goes back to the rich young ruler, how hard it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. What's he talking about? It's not when you mean money is bad. It's when you're trusting in the wrong thing. I pray for your loved ones. If you're here today and you know for a fact you're born again, you know for a fact you're saved, there's no, there's no doubt you, you belong to him you've prayed for your loved ones and you're here and you're dealing with injury, sickness, disease, poverty, stop. We all in the natural, we all have problems we have to deal with. But it's time for you to accept what the Bible says, what the Word of God says, what the kingdom says, God's way of doing things. Quit blaming God on your sickness. Quit saying if it's God's will, I'll be healed. His will and His kingdom says by His stripes are healed. It's settled. In God's kingdom, it's done. In Christ, it's done. So the problem is not with God's kingdom. 
Remember, you got light and darkness. The problem is not there. The problem is what's between our heads. It's renewing of our minds. Will you accept what you see, which is a sickness or poverty or whatever it may be, or will you accept what God has said about it in His kingdom? When you start accepting by faith, that's believing what His Word says about it. His Word, remember, is the spiritual baptism, the washing of the Word, regeneration. Why do you think He came for it? As I was going to earlier, listen to it again. As he has been baptized in the natural, that represents spiritually you being baptized in him. That's why he sent the Holy Ghost down on the day of Pentecost. That's what it's talking about. We're supposed to be baptized into Christ, which is the Word, which is the Son, which is the kingdom. If you've got that, then please accept all the benefits that goes with it. That's kind of me going to help buying a brand new nice car cost fifty thousand dollars and put it out there and i'm in the middle of the summer going down to florida saying honey man it's hot i'm about to sweat to death and she's like well honey just cut that off there's right there and i'm gonna cut it on i'm sweating to death are you freezing in a car and you, and you have a heater that's how that's how we act sometimes god has given you everything you need but we gotta accept it most of the time we're not stubborn. Most of the time we're just blinded. Satan wants to blind you. Seek him. Put Satan in his spot, which is up under your feet. We're going to go deeper into this as we go along. Let the Spirit guide you. What's your need today? When you finally get this, guys, you know what? Death is a wonderful thing. You don't fear death no more. I don't fear death at all. If I live to be 120, which God's promised I can, if I do on my end what I'm supposed to do, which most, 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 most of us don't, if I live to be that long, unless He comes back and raptures us up, hallelujah. But if I die tomorrow, then it's my gain. When you get to that point in life, you, when you actually quit living for yourself and living for the moment, you start living for the kingdom. I'm telling you, it changes everything. Everything. It's powerful. close right here. You must decide in your life and close right here. Listen very carefully. Everybody in this place, <clears throat> if you take this seriously and start walking in His ways, you, you're going to find to worry friends, family, neighbors, co-workers, people around you because you won't conform to a religion that they can understand oh, you are this, oh, you are that and put you in a box. If you won't do that and you get into the kingdom, you people, people will start hating you and thinking you're crazy. But you know what? It's okay. You've got to deal with that issue right there in your life. Everybody that has, to do, has to deal with that. When you finally get past that and say, I love you anyway. <laughs> I love you. you know, And you just love them, but you feel sorry for them for being spiritually ignorant, not knowing God's word. Then you're past all that then you're able to go to a whole new level within the kingdom. But you've got to deal with that first in your lives. Talk to some of your friends that needs to hear these kind of messages. Give them some CDs or DVDs. Invite them to church. Because when people walk through that door and they hear this kind of message, you know what happens? Real quickly, they either say, yes, I love it, or they run out the door. They ain't going to come back. But the thing is, what do you do with your life? Think about it. Thank you guys.